Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Royal News Network Saturday morning live stream. I hope you guys are doing all super well. I apologize for my late appearance. I just had a bit of technical difficulties and my computer had not charged overnight. So it took it a while for it to wake up and go, oh, yeah, we have to do this live stream this morning, which I'm so excited about. These are always what I look forward to probably most in the week. They are so fun. So I'm so glad you guys are joining me. Just lots going on in the royal sphere right now. We've had a lot of events this week. Obviously, we had Royal Ascot. Catherine and William appeared there yesterday. And the king won for his first Royal Ascot. His horse actually won the George V race. Desert hero, I think, or something is her name. And so she is a precious filly. And so she won for Charles. So that was super exciting. We obviously have also the state visit between the Netherlands and Belgium, where we saw some gorgeous tiaras. And of course, we have the continued epic meltdown of Harry and Meghan and their business deals. For some people who claim to be so smart, they are quite dumb when it comes to Hollywood and businesses. We have a great new piece out from the Wall Street Journal talking about Harry and Meghan, in particular talking about how, again, the eyes, the ideas that they came to Netflix and Spotify with were at most times subpar or just a little bit ridiculous. We also still have the Bill Simmons story floating out, out there about what Harry wanted to do. There is a report that Harry apparently wanted to talk to basically world leaders, dictators, tyrants about their traumatic childhood because everybody's just like Harry. We all want to mine our childhood trauma for public consumption. Yeah, that's what Vladimir Putin wants to do right now. Uh, obviously, we have the attempted coup going on in Russia. So if anybody from the stream is on Russia, many prayers out to you as they try to figure this out or see where things go. Obviously, lots of chaos and potential regime change there. So that is could be rather... It, hopefully it's smooth. Um, don't want to get too much into that, but prayers for safety for especially civilians involved in there. And then we also have, again, this Wall Street Journal piece talking about Harry and Meghan, some of their ideas that they pitched to Netflix and Spotify, which did not go anywhere, sound super awful because one of their ideas and unbelievably uncreative. One of their ideas was basically to take Emily in Paris and make a man version of that. <laughs> of like, well, they already have Emily in Paris. And I think if they went with the male version of Emily in Paris, why wouldn't you go with the people who created Emily in Paris? That, that would be the idea. Instead of going with Harry and Meghan, much like it sounded like her little spiel on Variety, which I've mentioned several times, but it still bears mentioning that she was like, she liked rom-coms and she thinks we should all have more rom-coms. But that's the extent of their ideas you get the sense of. And so just tons going on and so many, so many. Oh, I love this. Crunchy Dragon says, I want to see Harry interview Putin in South Park. Pretty please. Yes, that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, there was another idea apparently some other, they were going to basically copy another show as well, but they were going to make all the characters gay or something to that effect. That's, that's what my understanding was. And then there was a show with a character from, I think, Great Expectations, a Charles Dickens novel, and they were going to turn her from a maid into some sort of feminist icon fighting against the patriarchy. I'm like, but well, that's not how that character was written. And you do have to appreciate what was written for a particular time period. And I don't think that's that's going to going to happen. So it was very, very fascinating. Obviously Harry and Megan are a hot stinking mess. They are a hot mess. And pretty much everybody says at this point they are failing out of Hollywood. That's pretty much the general consensus, not only from us here in the YouTube space, but from social media, the mainstream media. Everybody's basically saying they failed out of Hollywood. They have some, I think, desperate Hail Marys they'll try. But, you know, the greatest indicator of success, not always, but most of the time, is hard work and actually being in a business that you're good at. And that was not the case for Harry or Meghan. So because of that, they are definitely, definitely on the downward plunge. And there's a lot of other factors going into it. Obviously, the the bursting of the streaming bubble, the lack of con the 
um, downsizing of most podcast operations. So it was just really fascinating. So we will discuss all of that today. So if you guys want to hit that like button, we will do that. We also have Crazy Neko for a super sticker. Thank you so much for starting off the live stream strong. We also have Catherine showing up at 10. Yes. Um, she worked briefly for Jigsaw. Yes, that is Catherine. Catherine worked as an accessories buyer for Jigsaw for a period of time. It was a short period of time. I'm not even sure if she was there a year. Well, obviously, she and William had, I think, a pretty good indication of where their relationship was going to go. And she didn't want to spend perhaps too much time getting into a strong probably business working relationship. So thank you so much, Catherine. Good morning. Good morning from Arizona E. Williamson. And then we also have Sophie. Did you see the moving pictures of the king at Ascot knowing how important Ascot was to late mother? It must have been quite difficult. Yeah, I think so. But I think he was probably super excited. Obviously, he had inherited as well many of Her Majesty's racehorses. I'm not sure exactly the provenance of the horse that he had in the race, but it might have been one of the queens initially. So I think that was something that was just truly really exciting. And she obviously loved horse racing. She loved horses. I don't know if Charles is as into it, but yes, I think it was a super exciting moment for him. We also have Rave Girl here for $10. Hi, thank you so much. Hi, WME has found out Megan is rogue and will not listen to any advice. This is another relationship that will sour sooner than later. She screws up with WME. She might as well pack it up. I think so. I think they had nothing to do with the, the NYC taxi stunt i think as a business they would have looked at that situation and gone mm, you know what that's probably not the bestest idea because most people even our executives can can see through that and i think either she didn't tell them or she told them they said no she didn't anyways and i think again that's been super super bad and you look at all these dynamics, all these relationships that have fallen apart or are falling apart. It sounds very much like Netflix will not pick up their option. They've lost Spotify already. The book deal will probably maybe still go on. But I think the big thing here, too, is that when it comes to business relationships, you need to work. You need to work. You can't just not work and expect people to just pay you oodles of money. And I felt like that's what Harry and Megan did. I think even when they had Lilibet, they're like, okay, we're taking six months off and Spotify and Netflix are say what now? That's That was probably part of their response is that they couldn't even get them to work during that six month time period. And I understand t spending time at home and taking care of your child, but you also are not somebody who has to actually physically go into work every day. You're not somebody who has to, let's say, doesn't have anybody to help them out. So you don't have a housekeeper, a nanny, a, a chef, a whole bunch of other things that are floating out around there uh, that Harry and Meghan do, which makes their lives a lot easier than most people. So I don't think... Especially with Harry, I don't think it was really an excuse to say, well, I'm just going to take six months off. I don't think that's workable because that's not what most people experience. E e anyways, and so I think there is actually Israel. I remember hearing about a study where they had the men stay home for the six months, the same amount of time as the women after childbirth. And the guys just spend it. They spent maybe the first week or two engaged. And then they were like basically doing whatever they wanted to do. And so most of the businesses actually took that paternity leave away because of that, which I thought was really interesting. So I think Megan is just a hot mess. Harry is. And I think they are hapless in this world that they were trying to get into. And again, WME is going to figure this out pretty quickly that she's pretty talentless in this area. And they do have a strong influencer game. So she may go back to being an influencer and if she does, you know, she can, she can do that. But at the same time, it puts her at a severe disadvantage as well, because at some point, again, you need to create content. And I don't think even her influencer content was that interesting. It wasn't that interesting. So what is she going to do with this? It's, it's fascinating to watch this whole thing crash and burn. Okay, we got a couple super stickers here real quick. We got Tom Taylor. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And then we have Jessica Reed as well. Hi, Jessica. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And Tanya too. Thank you so, so much. It's been, you guys are all so, so kind. I really do appreciate it here. And we'll get back to, I have a couple more here real quick, but I just want to make sure I gave shout outs to other people. 
as well. We have Janae. After the horrible week the Sussexes had, I'm calling Princess Catherine's red dress the revenge dress. Yes, I think you can definitely call it that. There's been so much going on. And Harry and Meghan, ooh, how they crashed and burned. We also have Christina. Good morning, Christina. Crunchy Dragon. Dawn, good morning from Darrington, South Carolina. And Debbie, she said stunning in red. That color really looks so good on her. It really does. I think Captain looked fantastic at Royal Ascot. I think it was a really, really great look. And I thought it was something that was definitely perfect for the occasion. And although I just, I'm still not totally a fan of the earrings, but I appreciate them. I think they added a unique perspective to it and gave her a little bit of a unique look in that outfit. And I thought she just looked absolutely stunning. Let's get a good look here at Catherine's gorgeous look because it is amazing. And then you don't have to just see my face because my face is not quite as exciting as looking at Catherine. <laughs> so I was hoping it looked better, but there we go. Yeah, there she is, guys. Oh, so it looked like she got some sun, too. Just so enjoying the sunshine and everything. She looked fabulous. And we have Lindsay, pink hand waving. Good afternoon from Scotland. Hope everybody is well. We got Helen and Lizzie, Gina, Renee. Yes, good morning. Great Wall Street Journal article today about Harry and Meghan's failure in Hollywood. Yes, everybody's picking up on this now. It's no longer hideable. They failed. They failed flat out flopped. And just as a, a content creator myself, I just, to have their resources, like Spotify built them a podcast studio in their home and they still couldn't get podcasts together. That's, I mean, I, I just can't imagine just the resources to do basically content creation all the time. I would, I would kill to have that opportunity just because it would, it would just be so awesome to do. I mean, I do do it all the time, but to have their resources and be able to get some really cool things together. Cause I have ideas on things on podcasts. I have an ideas on other shows. I have an idea on like a fiction series. I want to do, I have a ton of ideas and maybe not all of mine are good, but I feel like I could get some to fruition and Harry and Megan cannot. Katie says, good morning from Minnesota and Ritz. We have Her Royal Highness knocked out of this park in that gorgeous red ensemble. Simply stunning. Yes. She looked amazing. So Gina, Wendy, Kimberly, CLMM. Good day from Australian Midnight. Oh, my goodness. It is so late there. I'm always amazed people from Australia and Asia are on here because I'm like, it's so late for you guys. It's impossible, though, to find a time that sort of works for everybody. Cause I had to do that for a job once I had to find times for Australia, Canada, the UK and America. And that was just not like feasible. <laughs> we also have Julie, Tony, Tori, Christina, Elizabeth, the third, and we have Anne, Li Lila and Jane from Tampa, Florida, Tina from Illinois, Lori Hawkins. Do you think the Netflix will cancel, um, the Harkles. Yes. Yeah, so I think, I, I don't know what the rest of that is, but I think definitely um, it sounds like Harry and Meghan's deal with Netflix will probably come to an end. Um, I guess officially their end deal ends in 2025. I don't know if it'll make it that long, especially if the Invictus documentary flops. It will, I think, be an indication. They're like, eh. Because Harry and Meghan have have tried to, to submit other ideas, and Netflix is like, eh, no, no. That's that's not gonna work. And so I think that's I think that'll just continue to be that way. All right, let's go back over here. We have Crash Hard. Just call me Crash. Everyone does brilliant commentary, expert knowledge. Thank you. Why thank you so much? I do appreciate it. I'm so glad that you enjoy it, Crash. It means so much. So thank you. And then we've got Rave Girl Grin. Thank you so much for the tip. The Princess of Wales and Red simply divine. The downfall of Harry and Meghan and the resurgence of the RF could not have been timed any better. So true. So true. So yes, Catherine and William are the future of the monarchy, Harry and Meghan, their time came. And again, again, I'm not a fan of them, but they had a great opportunity. They could have created a ton of great stuff for Netflix, for Spotify. That had perhaps nothing to do with the royal family. I mean, obviously people wanted the royal family dirt, but if they could have created a brand separate from the royal family, at this point they might have not have been so, so public in their other catastrophe 
that they've made their, their public image in Hollywood. Because the thing is, again, they will never get as good a deal as they did with Netflix or Spotify. There was obviously a lot of cash at the time to throw at these various projects. The, that cash is drying up. There is a less of an interest in going all in on streaming. And so Harry and Meghan hit that, that wave. And then the wave petered out into nothing. And because of that, they won't ever really catch the wave again because they never proved themselves as true creatives to begin with. Megan, I mean, producer doesn't necessarily mean you have to be super creative, but you do have to have a good eye for things. And you do have to have a good knowledge of how to, let's say, manage a creative, manage a product in a decent way. And Meghan Markle has no ability to do that, as far as I'm aware. Uh, she's never shown any interest in that sphere because good producers are able to do just really amazing things. Uh, one of the examples of somebody who's rather crashed and burned, you could say, is Kathleen Kennedy over there at Lucasfilms. Pretty much um, the Indiana Jones film has gotten terrible reviews. I've heard bad things about it from other people. And then obviously as well, Star Wars has kind of petered out. And so that's an instance where a producer can do great things and yet also can do bad things. But, you know, you do have the flip side somewhat initially, at least with Marvel and Kevin Feige and Earl Perlmutter or something. He helped as well. So you do have these instances where a Producer can be huge, but Megan is not, it's not that she's just not that. And I think she goes into all this ESG stuff, which is killing films and cinema. So I just don't, I just cannot see her doing being successful in any of this, but we shall see all. Oh, and we have Karen. Thank you so much for the suit. Sharon. I'm so sorry. I was, I was reading your first name and your last name and my brain like mushed them together. So Sharon, thank you so much for the super sticker as well. And you got orchid. Thank you. I do appreciate it from Canada. And then Elizabeth, oh, thank you so much. $20. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. It helps with all this stuff so much. I'm super excited because I do have um, some things coming in to kind of create a really great, basically studio sphere. And so I hopefully maybe in a Saturday sometime soon, you will see me in my new studio setup. I'm very excited about that. So that should be really, really amazing, guys. And if you guys want to, it helps me when I'm looking for questions and com um, comments, things to discuss and everything. If you put them in all caps, that helps me find them. Uh, well, we do have MJ Clark. Hello, Brittany. And Miss Pippa from New Jersey. I think Miss Pippa's over on a chair recliner that I have. So she's not over here. I'm hoping one point I've seen somebody with a live stream put the live stream one of their live stream windows on their dog. And so when I have like my smaller space for the studio, I think I'm going to put a live stream on Pippa. So as she sleeps, you guys can watch her. At least a bit from time to time. Uh, Rambling Haven. Hi, Brittany and Pippa. What is your favorite dress worn by Catherine for the Ascot events? That's a good question. Because I do really love the red. But I think perhaps, I think I love the, the Alexander McQueen white lace dress that she wore not the longer dolce and gabbana one but there's one from alexander mcqueen she wore that i think was really gorgeous and so i think that would be i love that um i think that was her first act scott appearance in perhaps 2017 yeah oh look i got it right i got it right i was trying to find it Although it can be a little bit see-through here. But I do, do think this dress is absolutely gorgeous. And so let me let me find show you guys here real quickly. Because I do I do think this dress is gorgeous. I wish we've seen more of it, but I do think it was absolutely lovely. Do love the white, although the red really did stand out, I think, in so many ways. So that was super, super amazing. But I do love this dress as well. And apparently the red one she did wear earlier this year. We just didn't see it because it was under a coat. That was a catch by the Royal Fashion Police. <laughs> All right. Um, Kimberly says, I don't think they're canceled the Netflix until after the Invictus event. After then, they'll look to the numbers and see how well it did. That's my quest. Yes, that is correct. I think that's the look at what happened with in the Invictus Games documentary and see, okay, so did this thing do well out of the gate? And did it have staying power? Because that's what I wonder, too, if Netflix is worried about, is that, yes, you get this big bump when the Harry Met and Meghan 
series that initially dropped. But what happens? Did it fall off a cliff six months later? Is anybody watching that series now that it's basically done and over with? A lot of it's been debunked. And is anybody watching it again? I think that was a problem with archetypes. I think Spotify was like telling Harry and Meghan, hey, or particularly Megan, hey, yes, we pushed you to number one. It was artificial, but we went ahead and did it. And it's it doesn't really seem to have staying power. And I think she just tried to beat it to death. And she was like, no, I want to still continue to do it. And Spotify's like, no, I'm so sorry, but we can't do that. And so I think that was where the, the tension came in. Uh, so Asma says, does Harry work for Better Up? As far as I'm aware, he still works for Better Up. But I don't know. Better Up to me, I don't want to get in trouble, but it, it just seemed a little sketch to me personally. That's just my personal opinion about their business model and what they are intending on doing. So Trina asks, good morning. I know royal women plan their outfits months ahead. It was divine. The queen wore Dior. Yes. So, and somebody mentioned Trina as well, is that, um, um, that queen Camilla probably had that outfit set aside for her tour of France, which makes sense. And then that tour got canceled. And so she needed someplace else to wear it. And she decided to wear it there. It was a great day, probably a great time to wear it because when you are touring as a royal, generally you pick outfits that are from your your country and the country you're visiting. So if you're going to France, that's the one time Kate wore head to toe Chanel pretty much was in France. It made sense. I did actually like that dress because most of the things Charlotte Katsuragi has worn from Chanel, I'm like, ugh, how can you take Grace Kelly's granddaughter and put her some in, in some of these most like horrifically bad frocks and yet at the same time there's aspects there's dresses i love from chanel but all, all the things that charlotte's been in has been, have been mostly awful uh sadly but yeah so i think it was actually a outfit that was initially for the tour and then they canceled it and she just needed an occasion to wear it it made sense and again they do plan things out months ahead of time but it is some it is some clever 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 rubbing salt in the wound just a and royals are really good at that because you have to be good in the court system. Now, granted, we're not in the medieval times anymore, but you in the court system, you had to be very good at, for, at subtlety, at very subtle shade. But Megan's like a sledgehammer. She just like plows through everything. But I think it's a reflection of that very, very subtle shade you can do as a royal, as a diplomat going, you know what? I do have this Dior frock in the closet. You know what? Because we've seen all these reports. I'm just going to go ahead and wear that. And I think bravo to Queen Camilla for wearing that. And Trina, I think you're the one for the tour. I can't remember your last name if you are. Hi. I hope you're doing well. And yes, I think that's hysterical. If that's the case. Okay. So we're going to keep going. And so Mimi, Mima says there were some beautiful dresses for Ascot this season. There were, and there were some disappointing ones. Beatrice's outfit she wore the first day, that thing was unattractive. And I have Bulula London. I have a dress or two, and I like a lot of their stuff. It's very classic. It's very elegant. It's very English. Oh, but that was bad. That was, that was bad. <laughs> Katie says, yes, I had furniture delivered this morning. Yes. So I'm super excited. They came early, but my computer, again, when I came over here, I thought I had charged it in and it was, it was charging with this, um, power pack that I had. And then I came over and you know, that horrible moment. Then when you realize the, the power extender is not plugged in and you had plugged your, yeah, that, that was my morning. <laughs> I was like, no, I was kind of on time. Uh, Asma says, what do Harry and Megan do all day? I have no idea. No idea what the two of them do all day. Because I do this and I have I don't really have any help. And it's it's time consuming. It is very time consuming. I don't know what they do all day. And granted to me, I I can distract myself. I can I can I can lose time just like any other person on the planet doing stuff. And like I'm like, let me play this game. Let me play Candy Crush on my phone because I just need like two minutes to like turn my brain off. Totally get that. But the the lack of content that they've produced is is just absolutely stunning to me. 
with all the resources that they have. They have money, they have a mansion, they have time, they have kids. I mean, there's so many things. I look at even, I watch um, Sean Johnson. She's a, an American Olympic gymnast. She has two children now and a husband. Her, her husband have a pretty serious, basically um, little media business that they've created on Instagram and YouTube. And it's like, I know that they have help. And so it's, it's not terrible, but I mean, they, they, they look at trends on social media and they react to those trends and they do those things and they create content all the time. Harry and Megan don't do that. What do the two of them do all day? I can only imagine that they, they talk about their imaginary successes. I don't know. I don't know. I just find that absolutely crazy guys just personally to me, just unbelievably crazy. Oh, Debbie, thank you so much for the super sticker. You are so sweet to do so. Thank you. I, I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Um, Dawn says the best thing Harry and Megan can do is zip it. I feel for their children. Harry and Megan are toxic and to each other. Yeah, I, unfortunately, I, I, I hope their children are being raised in the utmost happiness and joyful place that they can. I just can't imagine that this stress of business, family, friendships is not impacting their home life in some way. I don't, and I, and I feel so sad that those kids have been purposely excluded from very historic events related to their family. I, I think their kids, Harry and Meghan's children may come to resent them for that quite a bit because it's like, Archie's like, probably like, I would have rather spent my birthday in a palace watching horses and carriages and soldiers go by and see my father in a crown with a massive diamond. I would rather do that than be in a bouncy house as an adult. Like as a child, he probably really doesn't care. As an adult, I think he'll care a lot. I imagine a little bit well as well. And I just think it's, yeah, I just can't imagine it's just a good environment because everything's going wrong. And when you have that and money troubles and their own self-obsession and narcissism and Harry's obsession with the media and stuff, and I think they constantly read the negative things about them. They may even watch this channel. They may be even on this live stream. How crazy would that be? That would be so weird. I hope they have better things to do with their time than watch me. Like, you guys need to work. Get to work. Come on now. Come on. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, th I just think, yeah, they are – and I just – I'm, I feel sorry for the kids. I do. I do. Uh, good morning from NYC. Allison says, I'm making myself some witters. I'm ready to gossip. Yes, that's what I got as well. I got some salted caramel here. Again, I'm still waiting for them to come back with the cinnamon because the cinnamon hot chocolate they had was absolute best, guys. It was the best. It was so good. I'm so bummed I didn't order more of that. Or buy like 10 cases of it. I look every time I'm back there and they still haven't brought it back. Uh, Lori Hawkins says, doesn't it make WME look bad to represent a client like Megan who is so disliked and how long before they realize she won't listen to them because she knows it all? I imagine they're finding that out already. Again, the, the epic, disastrous, unbelievably stupid car chase scenario in New York was just asinine and just unbelievably dumb. And everybody knew it. Even people who are on their side are like, what are they talking about? And I'm sure WME was just like, if you guys lost your minds, what were you thinking? I mean, I could be totally wrong, but I just can't imagine from a business perspective that you would go, oh, yeah, I've been to New York. Sure. At any mile an hour car chase in the middle of Manhattan, like that could happen. <laughs> no, I think they said no. I think Megan, again, is just doesn't listen to anyone, thinks she's right all the time. I think that's why. Oh, interesting thing from the, the Wall Street Journal piece as well. I, I linked it on Twitter from an archive. I do have a subscription now to a lot of news sources just so I can keep up with things. So I do have a subscription to the Wall Street Journal. But I got an archive piece as well that somebody posted that if you guys want to read it, you can. And I was talking about how when it came to Megan that went like right before her podcast went to air, she would call like the head of the per woman who hired them, the head of like creative services, like a senior VP or sweet level person to force her producers to make the changes that she wanted to. And that's just such tacky business practices because that's not that woman's job to do that. And Megan Again, she's somebody who constantly needs to tweak something to the nth degree, not because she needs to, but because she's obsessed with certain things. And so that just, to me, that would just drive me absolutely nuts to have somebody do that. 
oh my gosh, that would just be terrible. And it's just, I think it just annoyed the, the insanity out of people. So is Harry crazy to want to interview Putin and Trump? I just changed the wording just in case he gets flagged or something. Uh, but I think he's illusional. And again, not everybody is comfortable, nor do they want to reveal their family trauma on television for everybody to consume and, and mock. Because <laughs> if you look at him, Prince Harry has reliving his trauma. Has it gone well for him? Like he made money on his, his memoir, but he's also become a joke. Like they literally parodied him on South Park, Park using his book. They like had this whole scene where he was trying to like squeegee the guy's window with his blue todger. And it was just like so ridiculous. And it's like, yeah, it just hasn't, hasn't gone well for him at all. Oh, Angel says, good morning from Wisconsin. Watching this morning from the strawberries patch and doing some picking while they are in season. I'm so jealous. I love strawberries. Oh, strawberries make my heart so happy. Um, Crunchy Dragon says, I want to see Harry interview Putin, please. South Park, pretty please. Yeah, I think I did post this earlier, but I forgot to mention that I also heard of this. There was this actress and it was around the time Russia had, had invaded Ukraine. And she was talking about how... I would have loved you as a child, Putin. And she's like, did this whole soliloquy about how she would have taken care of him. And so he wouldn't be an obnoxious dictator. I was like, honey, you have no clue what you're talking about. Do you know how dumb you sound? No offense to you, honey. Bless your heart. But seriously, <laughs> because these things are very, very complicated. Putin is wanting to, has always wanted to basically reclaim the former Russian empire. That would include invading Ukraine. It's considered the breadbasket of Europe. It's why Hitler and Stalin basically fought over it at one point in World War II because Stalin invaded. Well, and he had it during the early stages of the purge and his control over the USSR. And then um, uh, Hitler invaded as well and, and committed his own atrocities because he wanted that, that land because it's the breadbasket of Europe. And obviously none of that went well. And I, a good book on that, although I don't like some of what he's done because I think he's gotten too political as a historian, but um, Timothy Snyder's The Bloodlands, the land, the between Hitler and Stalin is very good as a book. If you've never read it, it's very hard reading, but I think it's, it's a really good book as well. Uh, what to, why do that? I loved Beatrice's dress. Looking forward to seeing her fashion. Yes, I enjoy her fashion. Again, day one, I did not like. The, the day she was there with Catherine and William, oh, perfection. And those shoes that she wore are actually currently on sale at Netta Porter. And if you go there and use, they have a, a code off right now and you get an extra 10% off. They're Gianvinto Rossi satin pink pumps. <laughs> Deborah says the H's podcast idea may be in line with his updated status on LinkedIn. <coughs> Seriously, though, these world leaders will chew him up and spin him out in a minute. Yes, Harry is in his delusional fantasy land. We saw this on the stand with the trial when they're starting to challenge his delusions. Like, that did not go well for him. And these world leaders are just like, they're, they're dictators. And some of them are tyrants or, you know, depending on who they are. And they just would be like absolutely steamrolling him. And again... Your power as a dictator comes from people perhaps not knowing much about your childhood or the fabrication of what you want your childhood to be. So what are you going to do? Why well, you're going to go and tell people that, you know, that kids in your, your elementary school made fun of you for your big ears and you're Vladimir Putin. I like, I'm just making something up completely. No, no. Why? The, he wouldn't, like, why would he do that? So yeah, it just on, on the face of it, it just sounds ridiculous. Chris says, love that your pic shows Megan wearing the blue and purple outfit where her bump fell to her knees. Yeah, I know a lot of people are always very interested in that. I'm, I'm not on the surrogacy bandwagon, but I am on the idea that I think Megan did pat her bump from time to time if she didn't think it looked big enough, right enough, something like that, because she is a narcissist. So I think if her, her baby bump didn't look the way she wanted it to, I think it really bothered her. Uh, but also at the same time, it's kind of funny because her own narcissism is the reason why the circus rumors persist. Because uh, it's kind of like interesting with this whole thing with the submarine. When you lie, blatantly lie to the public, it, it tends to create unnecessary conspiracy theories because you have tried to subvert 
things. So when we have the submarine thing, James Cameron knew on Monday that it was gone. He told us that. They had heard the explo- the implosion. Their speakers had gone out to his community. So they all knew. And the military all knew. And so them searching for it on like doing this whole surge and talking about how much air they had left and everything, that was an entire farce. The military knew it from the jump. It was a complete and utter farce because they knew that most likely it had exploded. Now, granted, you can't say definitively, yes, we know it imploded and, and stuff like that. But I don't understand why they couldn't have said from the beginning, we have information that it's missing. We have a indicator that it's more than likely that this thing has imploded. So we are going to search for the right. We are hoping against hope we're wrong, but we're going to go ahead and search there anyways, because you got to think as well, they found this thing immediately when they went to the bottom pretty much. And so they knew exactly where it was. So they knew the point of explosion basically or implosion. And so they knew exactly where to search because the ocean floor is, is huge that they could find it as quickly as they did shows that they knew they knew rather exactly where it was. And that was because of the pinging and the implosions and everything. But it's like Harry and Meghan. So Harry and Meghan told the public and the world, the media, the British media, the, hey, Meghan Markle's in labor. Woohoo! Everybody gets super excited. This is great. Woo-hoo. And as it turned out, she had already given birth. So you blatantly lied to people. You blatantly lied. And because of that, it's fueled other other rumors and suggestions that did not need to be there to begin with and that is your fault so if anybody has any questions about the kids i'm like harry and megan it's all them it's all them it's all them and their crazy issues so anyways <laughs> i was just Safina. good morning from utah i'm hungover but i love the live with you Brittany. love y'all i hope i don't i don't hurt your hangover or anything so but good morning Diz fan good morning Brittany. congrats on his majesty on winning his first horse race past week yes it would be, yeah, that's super exciting for Charles. I think, I think he did. Did, did I make it on time? Yes, you did. I'm so sorry. Again, I was late. Oh, Tom, congratulations reaching 119,000 subscribers. Thank you. I'm super excited. 120 is closing in. I had like a little bit of slow growth there for a little bit, but hopefully getting back on track. But yeah, it's been a crazy, insane journey, mixing it up and hopefully having more things in the fall there. I'm super excited. Robin says, Brittany, how are the Middletons doing? I know that because of COVID panic and quarantine, their business went bankrupt, but are they okay? Personally, I feel terrible for them. I don't think, okay, let's, I think obviously they are glad that they were able to sell the business. They were able to perhaps recoup some of their costs, but I also understand too, that there are a lot of investors that are upset and that can't be easy. And at the same time though, this idea that because they are the in-laws of the future king, that everything they say is golden and that nothing they say is that you should invest with them just because they're the in-laws of the future king. I think some people did that on that premise. And I think that premise is wrong. And I don't think William and Catherine should be blamed for people who are upset about that because it's not their business. But at the same time too, I think the Middletons are keeping a low profile because of some of the controversy, letting it blow over. Cause yes, they have, they have money. They made money from their business. I mean, that's, that's kind of how businesses go and not necessarily all the time when the business goes bankrupt, do the, the owners face all that many repercussions as a totally different series of questions. I don't understand the business side of it. That's not my brain really totally, but I can understand some of the frustration from investors, but at the same time, you know, obviously it was a business and it struggled under the weight of the pandemic and then Amazon and everything. So I feel sorry for them because they did build something that was great. I mean, bravo for them for building their own business. I think that's fantastic and wonderful and amazing. And I think they were probably getting to the age too, where they were looking to offload. So it dovetailed somewhat nicely. I think the fallout though is not what they anticipated. And I think that's a, a source of frustration, I'm sure. But again, I think unless they, they, um, they're able to pull things back, I think, I think that's, best that they do keep a bit of a low profile. And I did just get a message from my sister and she's saying, well, maybe Harry wants to fix Putin. <laughs> I could totally see that because, you know, Megan's fixed him. So maybe he thinks now that he is brilliant enough to fix Vladimir and Putin and bring world peace to the international stage. That would be so Harry. 
<laughs> It'd be so hairy to pick it up. But yeah, I don't think that'll happen. Kelly says, everyone knows they failed in Hollywood except for WME and Harry and Meghan. I think Harry and Meghan are still deluded enough to think they did not crash and burn. Uh, so Me Douglas says, I can see Meg go along with Harry on the interviews and interrupts to talk about herself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, you know, because hey, Meghan Markle and Vladimir Putin have so much in common. <laughs> they really do. Um. We got all oh, Cindy. Thank you so much for the super sticker. $50. I do appreciate it so much. You are so sweet. Thank you. That really goes help support the channel. I'm planning on doing a going to the, the Swedish Kings golden Jubilee later this year. So that's 50 years on the throne. So I'll spend a couple of days in Sweden. I'm so excited. I'm going to the, the coronation exhibit. I'm hoping I can take pictures. We'll have to see. They may not allow you to, but I'm I'm super excited about it. So it should be really amazing. I've never been to Sweden. I've always wanted to go. There's also a really cool Vasa ship there. And so that should be absolutely amazing that I'd want to cover. And so I know I have a follower too who said that they may be able to get me a like a little mini tour about around Stockholm, which would be great. So um they have a little tour business. So I, I'll probably reach out to them about that because I think that would be amazing uh, just to get a good feel for the city. I love going different places. So it's super exciting. All right, Jen, happy Saturday. B. What's your thought on Beatrice writing with Kate and William, especially after the Jordan wedding? Think she maybe is slowly adding B. Sorry, reading too fast. Think maybe she is being slowly folded into more royal work life. I, 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 I think it would be lovely if she was. I, I really do. I don't know for sure. Again, Charles, I think, is a real stickler for this slimming down the monarchy, less working royals, only working royals on the balcony for trooping, those type of things, which, again, I don't think serve him super well in the long run. I think he should focus more on making sure all the engagements are covered as much as possible unless on, well, if we have too many members, because again, he'll lose the Duke of Kent here pretty soon. I think he's, he's pushing 90 princess Alexandra. I think he'll lose her pretty soon as well. And just in terms of working Royal as, and then you have obviously, and, and as a workhorse and will work, I think until she is like, she physically cannot work anymore, but then all you have is Charles and Camilla and they're both, closing in on 80. So they're getting up there. And so your younger Royal is basically Catherine and William. And that's it. Sophie and Edward are a little bit in that space. I don't think they've hit 60 yet. Maybe Edward. I don't think they've hit 60 weight yet, but again, they're getting older. They need just some younger people. And I think Beatrice would be a great person to add into the fold. So I want to look too much into it, but I think, I think not. Uh, Asma says, uh, why has the Sussex squad gone silent? I wouldn't say they're silent. I feel like I hear a lot from them anymore. But I think they are in an absolute panic because they believe the facade and they believe the lie that Meghan Markle or, and Prince Harry were these super successful, super popular, that they were these amazing, amazing people. And it's just crashed and burned. And... They don't know why, because I think, again, they believe the facade rather than understanding the nuances of the situation. And that's, that's saying, oh, Tom, love you, Brittany. Wish you so much success. Thank you. Why, thank you. Then we have Tanya. What else do they have to say? I think that's a huge question. I mean, nothing. What what can they say? Um, so we have Jotters. Good morning, Brittany. I'm hoping South Park is going to do a show, us a second episode about the heart goals. There's more than enough content to make it happen. Oh yeah. I think, I think that's, I think they could, oh, so much you could mine from the Harry and Meghan. So, so much. Okay. And then we have, oh, Lizzie B. Thank you so much for the tip. It would have been better to call the podcast stereotypes, research historical figures from the past and do interviews with someone from the present collaborate more on the subject and give advice. Yes. I think that could be super interesting. Again, there was a lot there to work with potentially, but Megan really only wanted to interview celebrities. She didn't want to interview any of the experts. She really didn't care about expanding on her topic. Really. She just saw, I think it gave her the, the identity she wanted in the, in the media sphere, if that makes sense as a crusader for women and everything. But yeah, archetypes, is a dumb name. It, it does. It's really stereotypes and perhaps somebody else had that and she wanted something more unique. And so she went with archetypes. I think it should have been archetypes, <laughs> which is dumb, but at the same time it went with Archwell. And I think she was trying to tie it into Archwell, but it just didn't work. 
And it just wasn't interesting. I mean, I've listened to it. It was dull. And what was interesting, too, reading through the Wall Street Journal piece that was in there this morning, again, you can head over to my Twitter, RNN underscore Royal News, and that's my Twitter account, and you can find it. And it was talking about how that pot, the Spotify was moving away from some of its overly produced content. And I think Meghan Markle's podcast fit in there. It was convoluted. It was, it was a, I call it a Frankenstein piece because she's interviewing somebody and then she has to interrupt them basically either within the, the, the podcast itself or separately with a different intro talking about, well, now we need to talk to this expert. And so it chopped up the interview. So there was just not this natural flow to it. And there wasn't this free give and take that I think a lot of other conversation have, which are so much easier to edit because basically you're like, oh yeah, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have said X, but those are a lot easier to edit than something where you have to frank and bite it together and you have to get the right tone and the right skip. And it, it just becomes much more complicated than it needs to be and overly produced for what it was. And I think that was, again, key failure for Harry and Megan there and especially Megan. And I think doing looking at historical women like Joan of Arc would have been very interesting to look at Eleanor of Aquitaine you have Queen Elizabeth the first you have Queen Victoria you have let's say like Queen Mary of Queen, um William and Mary you have Catherine the Great Marie Antoinette you have Marie Antoinette's mother Maria Theresa you have just oh like Joanna of of Naples you have so many women who have broken barriers and and stereotypes, especially in some of the, these middle aged countries and everything that are just super fascinating and really did push the limits of what was available at the time. But Megan didn't do any of that. She just really kept it pretty dull and rehashing things that we've heard 10,000 times before and not adding anything new to the conversation. And that again, killed this brand. And I think that's why it didn't have any staying power. Cause once the media hype about it ended, nobody gave, Nobody cared anymore. Nobody cared anymore. And I think that's what Spotify was looking at. It's like, yeah, we got this big bump initially, but then nobody else was listening to this at all. Whereas perhaps Joe Rogan's podcast, he even gets the big bump and he gets listenership up the wazoo for years ago. So that's that's a huge difference. And again, too, because Meghan Markle's podcast was so overproduced, she couldn't hit the production markers that she needed because she was taking way too long. And again, that was, that was their fault. Oh, Sharon, thank you again. I so appreciate it. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Oh my goodness. I'm going through here trying to get all these. Okay. And we got a sugar cookie. I don't expect to see Prince and Princess of Wales children's clothing line, or maybe she has pitched it and it was a no go. Yeah. She could have definitely, sorry, this is Prince and Princess children's clothing line. Yeah. She could definitely have done that. Megan, obviously super, super obsessed with her children being a prince and princess. Uh, I, I, I kind of get it. I, I can't totally blame her for that. But I think at the same time, too, the mixed messaging of that they did initially of, uh, oh, we want them to have a normal life. And I actually, that was one of the few things I was like, oh, good for Harry and Megan. You guys get it. You didn't raise a fuss. You're like, okay, Archie will just be Archie because he has no constitutional role. But then for them to strong arm later their kids into a prince and princess, and it's just, it's just dumb. They live in California. They have no relationship with their family. Them calling themselves a prince and princess is just idiotic in my opinion. What are you the prince and princess of? Sussex, a place you haven't been. And I can't imagine some of the mockery that they might get on the, the kids' playground at some point with people going, <laughs> you're a prince and princess. Oh, give me a break. Your parents are just like everybody else trying to schlep it in Hollywood. You don't even talk to your grandfather. Like just, just the, the lunacy of it, I think is a disadvantage to Archie and Lilibet because they should just be Archie and Lilibet. And then at some point, cause Harry's like, Oh, well, you know, and they'll, they'll choose at some point maybe that they won't want it. And I was like, Pretty much nobody who's had a royal title, as far as I'm aware, has ever chosen themselves to pull aspects of their title back. The Den, the Danes raise well, the um, the Danish queen, her second sons, their family raised a bit of a fuss and frustration over the kids being demoted from prince and princess to count and countess. That was that was not a popular move. And you also had obviously they did in Sweden, but the kids were kids, and then we had in 
Martha Louise in, in Norway took back and walked back her royal title from Royal Highness Princess. And now she goes just professionally by Martha Louise. And the 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 thing is that she's started to date this um, guru shaman guy from who's like connected with goop and stuff. And he's, he's weird. He thinks you can cure cancer with the power of your, no, that you invited cancer on yourself, which I find unbelievably insulting to people. Like you could not be more insulting. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, all right, Christina, thank you so much for the super sticker as well. Again, I do appreciate you guys' support so much. And then we have Robin. Thank you for answering my question. Well, I'm so glad I was able to get to it. Thank you so much for asking. All right. And with Leisha, we have, I'm enjoying the glam and drama Catherine is bringing lately. I do. I do. Uh, it's, it's great. Love the earrings. JR asked, you know, the brand. So it's Suzanne, but I want to, so it's S E Z A N E. I believe it's how it's spelled. Um, and I looked through and I could not, though that particular style was not available, at least on the U S website, it might be available elsewhere. So Anyways, oh, Josefina, I love your face. Why, thank you. <laughs> I don't always love my face. So it's, it's lovely what other people do. Uh, Melissa says, do you do people say Megan is black when she always says she was white? Is, golly, I don't, like, I think she's always thrived on the ambiguity of her looks. And she's naturally quite pale. Like, her kids, as far as we can tell, look pretty much white. Uh, and I think that's how they're going to look. And I think that's because her husband's pale and she's pale. And so the kids are pale. Shouldn't be a surprise. Brits, where is your hot chocolate? It's right here. It's right here. You can see the milk that runneth over. Love these bright colors. And Mima says green and reds. Yes. Amazing. So, uh, hi, Brittany and friends. Any news regarding Harry being hospitalized? Yes, there was this rumor floating around that apparently Harry and Meghan had this massive fight at a restaurant in Montecito and that he, like, collapsed or something. Somebody said it was in a Montecito newspaper. I haven't heard that. I've heard no corroboration of it. I, I don't entirely anticipate that's true. If Harry did have, like, a massive public meltdown, I cannot imagine that we wouldn't have video, we wouldn't have tons of people coming out talking about it. Uh, I think I just, there's just no way to avoid that. I don't think, uh, because there's just so many people with cameras anymore. Like anytime anybody does anything, like the cameras are out and they're filming. So I just can't see how that would totally be avoided in that situation. Terry says as an influencer, she will have some followers, but I think most people will be interested for a short period of time. Megan has very little talent. She does. And if you look at her, interviews that she did with people <laughs> and like she asked them like seven questions like what's the first thing you do in the morning and if you went to a desert island what book would you bring like those are the type of like it was just very inane questions I have to say and she and it's like so that was her level and so I remember looking at those questions and she's like oh this person's an x y and z and she like talks them up and up and up and then she asked them these banal questions and I'm like Okay, so you talk to this person up who fights human trafficking and everything, and you ask her just these basic questions. I'm like, you're really not as deep as you think you are. Are you? Yeah, so that's my thought. Uh, Crunchy Dragon says, I kind of think it's odd Megan calls her children biracial. Will their children also be biracial? You know, if they only have babies with white people. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell, but yeah, they just look, they just look like, the rest of the Windsors. So yeah, I mean, that works well, I guess for her, her, I'm sure she's hoping to death that little bit looks like Diana. Cause she really wants to put that Diana connection hard. Um, Blaine says just the thought ha both have fathers who are enablers, which in my opinion produces weak characters. When will both fathers just stop and say enough? No, it's, I know. I think it's past time. Grow up. Shut up. Yeah. I think Harry and Megan, especially, I think Charles should like, just say, not publicly, but privately to the government. It's like, yeah, go ahead. Take the titles. Take the titles. Because he needs to do it for his, his like, the, the future of the monarchy. They don't need those titles. The kids don't need those titles. And, again, amend it like the Swedish do. Say you must be raised and educated in the U.K. to have a prince and princess title. Otherwise, I just think it's dumb. Elsa asks, oh, thank you so much for the super secure. Dear Harold Spencer, I lost my mother too. You're not the only one. No more words. Yes, Harry is not the only one who has suffered. 
but he is obsessed with his own suffering. He's so deluded. Like he really thinks he is the person who has suffered the most in the history of humanity. It's like, I can think of a thousand people. Like you read the bloodlands, the land between Hitler and Stalin, the book I mentioned earlier, that'll, that, that could upset you it's it's very very horrific what people experience especially in famine i've studied famine it is an awful phenomenon especially ones that are man-made because most famines are man-made anymore horrifically bad especially the early one in ukraine in the 1930s horrific uh so harry saying oh my mother died everything is terrible i'm like everybody has struggles, Harry. You're not the only person in existence who's had issues. Uh, and Pam, thank you so much for the super sticker or for the tip as well. Any information about Harry and Megan wanting to change your last name to Spencer? Yes, I heard that. And I'm like, what? Because they can't be Mountbatten Windsor because Megan cannot have the surname Mountbatten Windsor. She's not a blood royal. So the Spencer name change is just bizarre to me. It's like... You might, you might as well just call yourself a Harry and Meghan Sussex or just like drop the, just go back to Meghan Markle. You will still be Meghan Markle. Nobody's going to start calling you Meghan Spencer. Like nobody's going to do that. You're not even a Spencer. <laughs> it would just like, if they did that, it would just be like the, the cream of the crop, absolute panic, freak out of what what they're doing and everything that they can't control themselves and that they have to do this hail Mary and go, Oh, you know what? We're just going to change our name here to the Spencers and be like, Oh my gosh. So yeah, I don't know about that. That was something Tom Bauer suggested. I, I, I see Tom as a pretty decent source, so it could entirely be possible. But again, it just seems dumb to me. That's just my opinion. Oh, and Jolene, thank you so much for the super sticker as well. $20. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, and then we have Crazy Cats. I recently joined the Monarchist League of Canada. If anyone else in Canada is really into the monarchy. Oh, that's cool. I haven't heard that. Um, Good morning, Pat said. Love the Queen and Dior. Princess of Wales looked amazing, as did the rest of the royals. They did. Good morning from Massachusetts from Colleen. And yes, I think Netflix will dump them too. It sounds like, it sounds like that's the case. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Linda says, after wanting to discuss his, the childhood traumas with world leaders, I'm seriously beginning to worry about his mental stability. I think it won't take much for him to become dangerous. Yeah, I don't think Harry's very stable. I don't think his mental stability is all there. So yeah, unfortunately for him. Oh, Tom says, great to see you, Brittany. Got to run, taking my granddaughter shopping. Much love to everyone. Yay. I hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastic time. One of my favorite activities is shopping. Not going to lie, guys. I love to shop. <laughs> um, it's one of my favorite things, especially loving shopping for a deal. That makes me so happy. All right. Don says, I love those earrings. I think long vertical lines for dress needed a pause to focus on Catherine's glowing face. No need to blood. No need for blush on her cheeks today. Yeah, I think it was definitely the earrings were interesting. And I, they might have been the same brand that she wore for Christmas, which I didn't really care for those earrings. But it's, just, again, just very interesting. <laughs> Allison said, the moment I saw right through Megan was when she overdramatized her experience of curtsying to the queen and looked at Harry um, and the look that Harry gave her. Yeah, I think there's some points where it does, like, Harry can't lie as well as Megan can. And I think, again, they have nothing in common. She has no respect for his family, his traditions, his heritage, anything. And so I think that does cause a lot of tensions behind the scene. Uh, Tanya says, I love your podcast. Would we'll listen sometimes in my classroom on my conference. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Uh, Kathy says, why would a fashion or beauty brand want to partner with someone who always looks unkempt? I don't know. Because I think she's an epic disaster area when it comes to fashion like most of her stuff looks bad i'm sorry it just does she just picks the worst things for her body type i mean obviously i've done it occasionally as well i've looked at myself in the mirror after i go out and go this was a really terrible outfit was it <laughs> do you have those moments but again it's it's different too i think when you have every resource available in the world to look your best every single time and then that becomes less of an excuse i think They were going to say Spotify was jealous of the charisma Megan had, and they knew she was heading toward a, to win a Pulitzer prize based on the interview with her friends. Yeah. So yeah, she really did 
really, really did, um, really thinks that she is breaking groundbreaking in every single way. And I'm like, no, no, you're really not. There's women who've done far more than you have. And some of them did that like centuries ago. <laughs> Jan Dex says long-term career path could take it. What long-term career path could take Carrie and Megan into the future? I think this is an interesting question actually, because again, they, they have an opportunity here, but I think their opportunity is to actually Either they either need to, I think they need to leave Hollywood. I think they need to let go of the Hollywood thing, give it up, let it go, move on. Um, I don't, I think Megan just needs to be an influencer, but not based in Hollywood. There's a lot of influencers based all over the country. Just do that. Just be as shallow as you want to be, Megan. That is, that is who you are at the end of the day. I think she needs to stop pretending that she's this charitable, wonderful, amazing person. I mean, I think that's always been part of her pathology to, overemphasize her, you know, her charity and, um, her ability to like, you know, her speeches at the UN and everything that were just grossly over exaggerated. I think that to a certain extent, Megan needs to let that stuff go and just embrace your shallowness, Megan, just embrace it, be who you are. I think the lack of authenticity, which I talked about in my last video, not, I shouldn't, I didn't make it the point as, as well as I should have perhaps, but I had worked on the video a long time already. I didn't want to scrap it. But um, so yeah, that's that's a failure of me uh, as a creator on that part. But I think Megan is not authentic when she's attempting to be this person that she's really not. And that's a lesson we can all take. Don't try to be who you are not. Like what you see with me is what you get. Anybody who's been on the tours, met we in person knows this is this is me. Uh, and so I think her her Achilles heel has been so is that she's so married to this persona that she has created in her own mind. And because of that, like she, she does these things that just don't make sense. They just don't make sense in comparison to who she really is. And I think that's what's sinking them. You need to just let it go, Megan, let go of this facade. Cause again, she's like went to the safari with Harry in Botswana and she was acting like she loved it and every moment was wonderful. And perhaps it was like a smidge, but have they ever been back to Africa again when it wasn't part of a royal tour? No. Does she care about Africa? I don't think she gives one lick about Africa. And so Harry's passion for it has been completely superseded by Megan's obsession with Hollywood. And so again, that's tension in the marriage. And I think again, just let go of whatever, like deep thing that you're thinking of Megan, just embrace your inner shallowness, honey. You will be so much better off if you start being an authentic human being rather than being this, you know, Instagram persona that is not true because it just doesn't work. Aunt oh, Judith, thank you so much for the super sticker as well. You are so kind. Joy Day asks, have you read Revenge? I have. It's good. I think, again, he brought up some really interesting things for it. And so I really did appreciate it. Uh, Brittany, are they allowed to use Spencer? I mean, I think technically you can change your name to anything in the United States because obviously we had a Phoebe from Friends change her name to Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. And so, um, so yeah, this is entirely possible, but especially at Mountbatten, Windsor, she would never, ever be called that in the UK because she cannot be called that because she's not a blood royal. Catherine is still technically Catherine Elizabeth Middleton, legally. Uh, she has her, her husband's title is a courtesy title and she cannot have Mountbatten wins her surname because she's not above the blood royal. Yes, it is archaic, but that's how it works. Um, so, uh, Alexei says in order to, for the Olymp Invictus games to have longevity, they need to stand on their own without Harry, like the Olympic or Commonwealth games are bigger than one person. Yes. I think they need to let go of their sponsor or just grossly diminish his role. Cause it, he just him and Megan bring it down. Her basically treating it as a giant fashion show last year was just awful for the brand. I think Tori says, do you think Megan plagiarizes anytime she says something? Yeah. I, again, she's not, she's not a deep thinker. Uh, and again, it's, it's hard to, cause I, I do understand this, that if you listen or read people too much, you, you tend to uh, subconsciously mimic them. I know I do that a little bit, you know, perhaps in my speech patterns, how I present and stuff is things I've seen from other people that I like. So yes, you can definitely do that, but she doesn't strike me as somebody who really does have her own ideas and she's not somebody who 
is just a creative. She's just not that. And there's nothing wrong with that. You need all different people to make the world go round. Absolutely. But I think at the same time, Megan is a deeply shallow person, vain, vapid. And so I think that really does cripple her in a lot of ways. Pinky says, anyone know why the queen looks so angry at Megan at the wedding ceremony? I, th I think it was just being older. Like, you know, she kind of had a resting face that you could, you know, you could read certain things into, but I think it was mostly just just resting face. And I'm sure though they knew obviously things were going well behind the scenes, but again, I get the Royal family props. They were hoping beyond hope that Megan would maybe shape up after the wedding, that it was just pre wedding jitters. And I appreciate them giving her the benefit of the doubt, because I think we would all want in that situation, if we are not perfect if we don't behave the way we should at the moment that somebody gives us the benefit of the doubt that way we can learn and that maybe if we desire to to change ourselves or we want to change that that can occur but i think they did find out soon that this was megan and that she had no desire to change or ad address anything hello Brittany from north carolina do you hear andy cohen actually in his latest book that he wasn't pleased with the criticism of the housewife shows at the beginning of the episode yes i put that in one of my latest videos part of that clip and yeah, so it was interesting. Kelly says, you mentioned a video you did not care for Kate Middleton in the past. Just curious why. Uh, she just, for a while there, she just didn't seem to do much. And she didn't, like, if you compare her to some of her contemporaries, she was, especially early in her royal career, very, very, very slow to get off the ground. Now, granted, she had kid, children, but most of those other royal ladies did too. And they were, they were, they were working quite a bit because there were times there where Harry Kate would disappear for long periods of time. And so, and we just didn't for a while, especially at the beginning, she was somewhat a blank slate. She, we knew a couple of her interests, but it just didn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, but we've seen with the hold still after Louis was born, we had a hold still, we have the early years, like she's really grown into her role. It just took her a little bit more time to, I think, get, to get off the ground. Cause I think there is something to the question of work shyness. That's been an accusation placed on both Catherine and William. I think in some instances it did have, have merit because they got a really, really easy ride compared to, I mean, obviously the media attention is something totally different, but compared to like crown princess Victoria, crown princess Mary, queen Maxima, queen Letizia, um, you know, I met Marit from Norway gets a lot of leeway too. She doesn't work quite as much either, but they got a very, Catherine had a very slow entry in to the deep end, which was good. Um, but at the same time too, there's, there's a lot resting on Catherine and William. And so them needing to be seen more, I think, was really important. Uh, GB says, good morning, Brittany. I know that they, I know what they do all day. He stares at her and she stares in a mirror. I love your channel. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so true. Oh, and they also scroll down social media. They are obsessed with social media. So maybe they do watch this channel, which would be absolutely hysterical. I'd laugh. I'd laugh my little hiney off if they watch my channel. I think that'd be funny. Now, from a perspective of knowing what criticism is being leveled at you, my channel would be good to know about. But at the same time, it's like, eh, you know, it, can you take, cause you know, I get pushed back on various things. And it's like, there's sometimes where it's like, you want to, Ooh, push back or argue or something. I was like, Oh, just let it go. It's, it's fine. But I don't, I think Harry and Megan, they just work themselves up together all the time on things that people say. Be level baby. Thank you so much for the tip. Harry only realizes now after his marriage to Megan that what he actually lost in Chelsea Davy. I think so. Again, I've said it time and time again, Chelsea Davy's life. That would be what Harry probably would have wanted. If he left the Royal family, that's the life he would have wanted going to Africa when he wants and creating safaris, working with wildlife guides like that would be, I think his dream. But right now he's trying to schlep it in Hollywood and it ain't going well. And his wife is frustrated because it's not going well for her either. And so what are they doing? Probably taking their frustrations out on each other. That's probably what they're doing. Um, Alice O'Neill, thank you so much for the tip as well. Hi, Brittany. I'm so glad Harry and Megan weren't at tripping the color. The day would have been ruined. Yes, I am sort of glad they didn't go. Although especially because I wasn't there because I'd love to get pictures of them on the balcony and see it just be interesting to see the interactions on the balcony. And so in that instance, especially if Charles is limiting the 
the balcony to working worlds just because of Andrew and Harry and Megan. That that frustrates frustrates me a smidge because I'd love to see the other worlds as well. But at the same time, yes, I totally understand your sentiment. And I don't think anybody really wants to see them, but <laughs> Sherry says Megan spends all her day making her own clothes. That would be hysterical. Or just making them worse. Seeing how can I wrinkle this outfit today? Um, so Lu Luis asks, um, you have previously said Queen Maxima is your favorite royal, but which RF is your favorite? And have you thought about doing a video on ranking your favorite RFs? Ooh, that'd be interesting. I haven't thought about doing a video on that. I would like to do an intro video about like different royals from the different families and everything. But I would have to say probably maybe, I mean, you got to love the British, but they are so all encompassing that it's just, it's just crazy in a way. But I would have to say I enjoy the Swedes because they do have a lot of Sierra events. They have, I think, a lot of great events. And I think Crown Princess Victoria is just an absolute workhorse for the Swedish monarchy. I think Madeline's gorgeous. I love it when she shows up in the Aquamarine Tiara. That just makes my heart sing. And I enjoy watching the Monaco Royals as well. Monaco Royals, you have uh, obviously Caroline, Stephanie, Albert, Charlene, and then their kids, especially Caroline's kids. So that's uh, Andrea and his wife, Tatiana. You have um, Pierre and his wife, Beatrice. And you have Charlotte, whose husband is, I can't remember his name now. I'm blanking on his name. And Alexandra, uh, Princess Alexandra. of. Um, so they have all very interesting dynamics. So it's it's really interesting. But yeah, the Swedes, I feel like you see them a lot more, which is fun. And they, do, they did several christenings for the birth of their kids, which were all really funny. Uh, Tanya says, can we call CPS in California and do well for a check? I don't think so. I don't think that's necessary. Again, if something's really happening, obviously somebody else I think needs to raise that alarm. I don't think it, it helps anything for people who don't know them, don't interact with them to call about what we don't know. I don't think that that helps. Um, it is true that their trademark for archetypes was denied. Yes, yes. And so it's, it comes, yeah, they tried it again and apparently they're still going at it. And I'm like, why, why archetypes is dead. It's dead in the water. Why are you doing that? And so it's just a little bit ridiculous, but Harry and Megan are just absolutely self-obsessed. So <laughs> it's what it is. Belinda says, I do love you, Brittany. Your smile so loving and gentle and kind. Oh, thank you. I see your light. America is a Christian country and our King is Jesus. Just seeing you flat out say it makes me smile. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So, yes, if you're a Christian, you're, your king is Jesus. But also, obviously, there's kings of other countries as well. But um, can you imagine living in the same house as Megan and Doria? No. I think that would be crazy. Uh, Elizabeth asked, do you think they are still together? <sighs> yes. I don't know though, because I think I think the story that Harry is spending time in a hotel, I think it's a hundred percent correct. I think it is. I think they're 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 the oh gosh, the tension there is just bad. So yes, I think I think I think the the foundation is there, especially with them divorcing professionally. Basically, that Megan's going to do her own thing and Harry's going to do his own thing. That does not bode well. Uh, Deborah says, "I hope you're doing a video on Ascot fashion." Yes, it'll be in the fashion video. The the Fashion best and worst looks of the week. Because I think, I, oh, I won't say it yet. But yeah, there's, I think, should I say best and worst? They're both from Ascot. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Sorry, got a little bit. I took my allergy medicine this morning. Hoping I can get a little bit better because I struggle with that quite a bit. Uh, so we have Joanna says, if WME thought people wouldn't see right through the grifters leaving a secured vi vehicle and getting into an unsecured taxi, they aren't as good as they're made out to be. That is 100% true. If they were behind this at all, then they are as bad as Harry and Meghan are. Because, again, I've listened to people, somebody who's quite well known says, I don't know why in the world my, my security would ever tell me to get out of a secure vehicle and into a taxi cab. It's like, I have no clue why they would do that. And 100% correct. Uh, Brittany says, Lady Sophie Winkleman is wearing your Blula dress today at Ascot in yellow with cream hat bag shoes and nine. And um, shoes, nice. Yes, I did see that. She's wearing the yellow version of the lavender dress I got. I love it. 
love my lavender dress. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I just need to get in a little bit of better shape, but like life's been so crazy. I'm just hoping once I get some more, cause I'm still not totally fully moved in yet. I still have stuff in the garage. I still have boxes in different places, but I got a dresser cause I haven't had a dresser in, in a long time. I had more of a lingerie chest. If you don't know what that is, it's a tall thing with a series of drawers, but it doesn't hold much. And so it's like, I have stuff everywhere. And so that's why part of the reason I needed furniture because I need places to put things. Because I, because I have had, like I, our parents gave us our childhood things and I have bedding from beds like from 10 years ago and you just don't seem to get rid of that stuff. I don't know. Is that just me? Uh, you just to end up keeping it because you got it. Um, Jen Jen says, Harry seems very attached to his childhood trauma. Why can't he move on? Yeah, because I think if he moved on, he'd be in a much better place because William has moved on from his childhood trauma. And he's in a much better place. Not that he doesn't have, you know, perhaps residual challenges from it. We've heard he has a bit of a temper. His father does too. And so why, well, why can't Harry move on? And, you know, you'll still have issues. We all have issues. We're all human beings. We all have issues. But I think Harry not moving on has been his Achilles heel. And But it's something Megan's played on as well. Uh, Robin says, is it true Megan stole jewelry that she has actually caught going through people's royal personal effects? I don't think so. Again, I think they kept everything under lock and key. And it's very carefully managed because it is part of the Royal Collection Trust. And Megan did not get any jewelry from any palace jewelry. So any jewelry she had was Diana's. And she got like the unattractive sets. Like the only thing she got that I thought was super cool was the aquamarine ring. Um, I think she may have even a copy of the Cardi watch. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, she may have the original one. She may just also use the copy. I'm not sure. It's hard to know, but yeah, the aquamarine ring, you could say could be a copy too, but I think she does have the original, but that's the only thing of like, that's nice that she got of Diana's Kate got all the good jewelry and I don't think any of that will change. Ah, 2414. Thank you so much for the super sticker. I think I see your doggy there. So cute. And we have Karen as well. Thank you so much again for the super sticker. You are so kind. I really do appreciate it. It all helps with the channel and stuff because I'm going to get a couple of, um, I may have to get um, a new lens for the Swedish trip because I'm super excited about that. And I have my big long lens. But I want maybe a sh like there's they've they've come up with actually like a and it doesn't go quite as long as the lens I have, but the focal point is much lower, so that means more light gets in. So they just came out with that one. So I was like super excited that I thought they had this new camera thing, and then they didn't. So I was kind of bummed. But <laughs> uh, Alyssa says thank you. You are so talented. Your communication skills are fantastic. Your interview with Angela was perfect. Megan looked beyond juvenile compared to your talent. Look at Megan's interviews. Honestly, really bad. Oh, you are so kind to say, Allison. Thank you. Yes, I do agree. Megan's interview skills, golly, guys, they were bad. They were so bad. It's just really, really bad. And I need to get some more interviews lined up because I really do enjoy it, interviewing people. It's just so much fun. And it was just like with school and everything and the full-time job and the, um, and it just became way too much, but hopefully we can get, once I get more settled here, hopefully pretty soon we can get some of that ramped back up again. Cause I am super stoked to do it. It's wonderful and amazing, but yes, Megan Markle, she, yeah, interviews were bad. They were just bad. Cause like it, it kept being an interview that the Paris Hilton interview about her being a bimbo. It was entirely about Megan calling her a bimbo over and over and over again. I'm like, why would you sit there pay Paris Hilton and take this woman calling you a billion bill bimbo for the 10th time? I'm like, would you do that? Uh, Judas Goat Barbecue says, smash that like a button. Speaking of the medieval times reference, can you imagine the outrage if the roles were reversed and Harry said something about meeting her mother and did something stereotypically African-American? Yeah, if the, the roles were reversed too. Just think of it if a, a man was taking a woman away from all of her friends, family, job, life, everything, and taking her to another place and something like that. Megan's um, being a woman actually did, I think, protect her in a lot of ways from a lot of accusations potentially um, in regards to just that. Because to me, the unhealthiness of their relationship stems from the fact that Harry's given everything up to please her. And that does not a healthy relationship make. Your your spouse, your partner, whoever should not be telling you to drop your and all of your family and friends 
for them. It's that should be if they decide this a relationship isn't working for them, that should be your their choice, not yours, not you like twisting their arm and telling them they're all terrible people, which Megan essentially did. And so yeah, that's just terrible. Uh Elsa says, uh, thank you so much for the tip. I hope I'm translating correctly. What does the royal family earn and what does Harry and Megan earn? What do you give to charity or to yourself? Um, so yeah, so the royal family gets money from the the uh what is it called the sovereign grants that covers like up to the palaces and various things that covers various costs related to royal engagements not a ton but uh, it does cost that and then when it comes to more personal things and even clothes for tours and travel and various things those are covered under the duchy of cornwall and the duchy of lancaster so the duchy of cornwall is worth more than the duchy of lancaster so they get money essentially from payments made on the land they own so you could you see it as a form of taxes and so that is something again both william william controls the cornwall charles controls lancaster lancaster is worth less and gets less money than cornwall does so william is technically sitting on a bigger pot than um charles is but i think the the duchy of cornwall income is something like 20 to 25 million pounds a year i'm not sure what lancaster is but i would say it's probably in the same range roughly maybe a little bit lower and that money is there for them to you know if they let's say refurbish their home they get the outside taken care of because that's a crown estate property or belongs to the country and then in the interior whatever upgrades and stuff they they include would come out of those duchy purses and so charles is now supporting not only himself but his brother his other brother his sister in a lot of ways so he's supporting now you know his siblings basically on that he doesn't have to support harry Catherine and William obviously perhaps helped Charles with some of that upkeep of the other families. Maybe not. Charles probably was able to develop a decent nest egg out of his time as the Duke of Land, Duke of Cornwall. But again, I think some people overestimate the liquid cash that royals have. It's not as much as you might think. And then when it comes to charity, like they give a decent amount of charity. They have charitable trusts and everything. You know, um, I have given it to charity. I need to get be a bit better about that. Um, but yeah, so I, they all give to charity in one way or another. So yeah, I donate a lot of things to charity when I can. So it's all a cyclical, complicated thing. But yeah, so yeah, they make money. Now, technically, when it comes to Harry and Meghan, we don't know what they got. From, so their contract with Spotify was for $20 million. I would say at most, at most, they perhaps got ten. I would say more in the two to five range. And so if that's what they got, then I don't know what they would do with that. Cause it seemed like to me that they probably personally gave a $10 million donation to Archwell in attempt to get that tax write off for that money and to like protect themselves. I could be totally wrong there. And that's just basically sitting in a bank account at this point. And then you also have potentially Netflix, they probably have only gotten half maybe of that money. So it could be as much as 50 million, but they got to pay the producer. They got to pay costs. They got to pay all these different people. They have 24 hour security, which costs at least a million dollars a year, if not more. And they've got all these different things that they're running. So I think to a certain extent they're running out of steam and they're running out of money. So that would be my guess. Uh, Renee, thank you so much for the super sticker as well. You are so sweet. And then we have PDD. Um, very kind of you to donate um, or provide a tip. M is not actually with a subsidiary of WME, um, Harry Walker Agency, and they specialize in speakers. So not sure how much correcting they will be doing on Harry and Meghan. Yes, yeah, so they signed with Harry Walker Agency when they first left the royal family, but that really hasn't gone anywhere. They have not. I don't know if they if people can't meet their demands or if they're just people aren't fighting. But yes, it's part of WME. Um, but yeah, but Megan signed with WME as well. Oh, uh, Renee, thank you so much for the super sticker again. You are so sweet. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. I'm really behind. Um <laughs> Alexa says Harry and Megan think they're hot SHIT, but they're dog poop in a bag. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not great for Harry and Megan. They just really they they really do not. So yeah, Mad Eye says if Harry and Megan change their name to Spencer, will they still be entitled to hold on to the title? 
Yes, because they're technically they're changing their last name. And again, Megan can change her last name if she wants to. There's nothing illegal about that. I don't think it would affect the title. But would they look crazy pants? Yes, they would look crazy pants. <laughs> Linda says, does Harry expect Putin to start crying and saying his mommy didn't hug him enough and which turned him into a dictator? I think so. I think so. But again, I'm sure they were like, mm, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Uh, Misty says, love that Kelly Osborne got such a warm welcome with the truth about um, horrid Harry and satisfaction for her mom. Sharon. Yes. I think again, Hollywood, the protection Hollywood had, although Andy Cohen tried to walk back some of his comments about Megan a little bit, but the Hollywood protection Harry and Megan had for a while is gone. Sherry says, good morning, checking in a little late. I'll catch the rest later. Great job this week, Brittany reporting on what's going on with all the Royals. Why? Thank you. I do appreciate it. Jen Jen says, Dumb Prince and his wife of Canada, South Park movie. Yeah. You can make a whole movie on them. Oh, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. I hope you're doing well. Um, hope you're all well and safe. Love to be able to join you live stream from Perth, Australia. Love to Debbie and your sister. Why, thank you. I'm sure she really appreciates that. I'll definitely let her know. I'm hoping to see her later this afternoon. <laughs> Allison says, ooh, I hope Trevor writes a book. But I doubt it. I wish all her friends, um, wish all her friends along the way would talk to you. I would love that too. I think that'd be hysterical. I like this one. Alexei says, poor Meg, she would be able to trademark something. She only had original idea. Oh yeah. She has no, this woman has no original thoughts. I'm sorry. She just said that she does not have an original thought. Uh, she thinks she does. She thinks she's hot stuff. She thinks she's the most brilliantest woman who has ever lived, but I just don't see it. Uh, Lori says, I like the red dress Princess Catherine wore. She always looks impeccable. She does. You can disagree with her fashion outfit. There's only one time in her entire royal career where I ever thought that she looked less than her best in terms of having her outfit be, perf you know, you can dislike the outfit, but it at least looks good on her. And that was just one day where it looked like her roots were really growing in. It looked, she was, looked really, really rugged. I think from, it was just after George, not too long after George had been born. It had been several months, about six months, but yeah. And so that was the only time where I was like, Oh wow. Catherine's not looking, looking her best. But I think again, that's just natural a bit. And it's just like, but she always looks together. You can say you don't like her dress, but at least it looks impeccable on her. So uh, Jesse says, Jasmine Grimaldi of Monaco is very prominent, attends many events, and she's never asked Prince Al for, for any titles. He's a sweetheart, and he would if she asked. He might. I don't think he probably would, but he he might. But he seems to be a he seems to be a terrible husband, but decent father, a great uncle, a great brother. Like he seems to have very close relationships with his nieces and nephews. But spousal relationships are are not his forte. <laughs> Audrey Crunchy Dragon says, where is sweet Pippa? I wish we could share pupper pics. Yeah, she is over, I think, on the, the recliner. So she is like, you know what, guys? I'm just going to sit over here on the recliner because she may see somebody out the front windows, and that is super exciting. That's super exciting when that happens. Did you read Sir Trevor Phillips' comments in the Daily Mail? I might have, but his name is not sticking out to me. Uh, so Jen Jen asks, are you excited to hear Prince William's homeless plan this week? I am. I think that'll be great. Fantastic. I'm glad he's doing it. I'm glad he has a project he's passionate about. And I think, again, this is all bodes well for them, for Catherine and William. Okay. So let's see. Oh, my goodness. I'm so far behind the comments. No. <laughs> I scroll down to the end and it goes a long way. Oh, Elsa, thank you so much for the super sticker again. I do appreciate it. Uh, so Sassy says, I agree with Be Rebecca Wells for your studio. A, a recreative room from one of the palaces would be so unique. Some kind of royal background would work. Yeah, I'm going to have, well, all my royal books are still at my other house. So I'm going to bring them over. And so it's just going to be, should be super, super nice. So we will be hopefully, hopefully getting something and working so I can have like a nice camera and everything. The, the, the webcam works well, but there's other nicer cameras to do things with perhaps too. Uh, in terms of history, when did the Royal family lose their stronghold power over the country and the people? Thank you. So, so it was over a period of centuries, 
it it went from absolute power to being diminished with the Magna Carta that was with King John. And then after the Tudors, some of that power got slowly stripped away. It, it came back a little bit with the Stuarts because they had the 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 belief in the divine right of kings. But when James the Stuart, sorry, James the Second, who was a Stuart, was eventually ousted because he was a Catholic and he wanted to return the country to Catholicism, and the Protestants were like, "No, we don't want to do that." He fled to France, and his son-in-law, Prince William of Orange, and his daughter Mary were invited to take throne and basically at that point parliament set out the rules for what the royals would do and they were like okay you'll do this and this and this but you yeah you, we had the power parliament was able to secure power and they did not want to give it back this kind of came after the revolution as well i forgot to mention so charles ii this happened about 50 years before so charles ii or sorry charles i was beheaded charles ii came back to the throne and then it was that was in the earliest Charles I was beheaded in 1650-ish, I believe. And then he the monarchy returned about 10 years later in the 10th, in 1660s, uh, very early 1661, I think. Yes, 1661. And then King Willem of Orange came over in 1689 with the Glorious Revolution. So the Glorious Revolution is when they really did start to strip back the powers. Uh, and then you get... To Victoria time period and then to King George V and everything and then they're just slowly eroded even more to essentially just a parliamentary but basically a rubber stamp role their job is basically the parliament says this put your stamp on it it's done uh so it's a parliamentary uh republic if that makes sense constitutional monarchy there we go there we go I'm talking for an hour so and a half so we may wrap it up here in a second so elaine thank you so much for the super sticker you are so kind thank you i do appreciate it uh missy says i read kevin costner's wife said for landscapers for their one home in california costs them four hundred thousand dollars a year i don't see harry and Meghan being able to afford california forever probably not and again they're not making content they don't have the background in it it'll just be crazy uh brenda says in all seriousness where do you see think the Harkles will be this time next year i think they'd be heading for divorce if they're not there already i i just i just cannot see how any of this is going well for them i think harry will start to lose his court cases i think they'll again struggle to keep all these deals they'll lose them and then what do they do uh, Michelle, I have a question. If Harry and Meghan are not royals, then why so much coverage? If they are no longer relevant, then what? why make them relevant? I'm confused. That's a good question. So they are relevant because they continue to use their royal titles. And as we look to the future and what it means to be royal, there's a question of how to look at royalty and what role can it play? Are royals influencers? Are royals diplomats? What role do they play? And Harry and Meghan, I think, are kind of dangerous because they're conflating these two ideas of Hollywood and royalty. And so that poses a danger to, to other people and to the, the stability of the monarchies because they still matter. They're still important. The British monarchy will celebrate sort of its official 1,000-year anniversary in 2066. And so those anniversaries are important. And the the power and the legacy that they bring to a country, I think, is something really, really critical uh, because they are a, a thread of history that has gone on for a 1,000 years, in the case of the British monarchy and some of the other ones as well. And so I think Harry and Meghan are damaging that. They're damaging Charles. They're damaging so many different things. And so I think that's incredibly, in, just incredibly important to examine because I like monarchies and I want them to stay. And Harry and Meghan are confusing people about what monarchies actually are. So I think I love the idea of, uh, not love the idea, but I want to preserve the monarchy the best I can. So I like talking and sharing some truth about it because otherwise you don't get it. So I think guys, we will go ahead and end on that question. And for those of you who are wondering and asking, yes, here is Miss Pippa, her little collar, which is so cute. It has a bow on it, but also has crowns you can see. And then it has a little diamond <laughs> that hangs from it. So she's her own little pretty princess. And so she says, hi, 
And so she was sleeping and she decided to wake up because she knew it was like maybe coming to an end. And she's like, oh, well, maybe mommy will be able to pet me. So Miss Pippa, can you see him? Do you see him? Oh, do you see the people? <laughs> so yeah, she would love to say hi to all you guys. Give everybody lots and lots of kisses because she loves giving kisses. And sometimes as a human, you she 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 kind of gets you right up the nose or right in the mouth. It's always fun when that happens. So guys, again, I hope you guys have a wonderful and amazing Saturday and the rest of your weekend. Spend time with friends and family and loved ones. Get a lot of things accomplished. I hope you have a great week next week at work. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Bye. Say bye, Miss Pippa. Bye. Oh, boy, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>